Hello, space enthusiasts. Get ready to embark on an incredible adventure as we unveil the secrets of the moon base's first 10,000 days. From the monumental construction phases to the thriving community that now calls the moon home, this time lapse will leave you in awe. Buckle up as we journey beyond the stars. The Lunar Gateway Space Station goes online. A starship undocks, heading towards the surface of the moon. A NASA Orion spacecraft has transported four astronauts from Earth to the Lunar Space Station. Two have been transferred onto the starship HLS, the Human Landing System. These are the first astronauts to begin work on building the first lunar base, marking the beginning of the industrial age on the moon. An age which brings lunar dust shields, lava tube habitats, light bending towers, and the magnetic lunar core. And human DNA is sent to storage vaults on the moon as an extinction backup. Cube satellites orbit the moon scouting for lunar icy water. Viper rovers are prospecting for different types of lunar ice at the South Pole. Prime ice drills are deployed to harvest the ice from below the lunar surface. The ice is needed to make fuel, water, and oxygen. Other rovers explore and map nearby lava tubes with their satellites. 3D LiDAR scanners. Testing begins on mixing the moon's loose soil, the regolith, and a plant-based glue to create a 3D printing building material. The first Artemis habitation and life support modules are delivered to the lunar south pole. On Earth, a treaty is signed to preserve culturally significant sites of lunar history. The Tranquility Base and the first footprints are listed as historical sites and are protected from nearby landings that would destroy the areas with lunar dust. An electrodynamic dust shield is built and begins testing. A moving electrical field, like how hair sticks to a balloon with a charge, is used to repel lunar dust, protecting spacesuits, solar panels, and habitats. The Cosmic Starlink Network goes online, connecting the Moon and the Gateway Space Station to Earth and to Mars. A new command center and telecommunication facility is seen being built. The construction phase for China and Russia's International Lunar Research Station, the ILRS, begins. Experiments to turn lunar regolith into living soil progresses. The crew at the Artemis Base Camp refuels an uncrewed launch vehicle with propellant manufactured on the moon, testing liftoff of the first vehicle powered by lunar rocket fuel. The Russian and Chinese ILRS program begins building their own lunar space station. The Deep Space Transport spaceship transports cargo and crew members to Mars. It shuttles between lunar and Martian orbits. Maintenance happens in orbit around the moon. Satellites send astronauts the first emergency solar flare evacuation warning, giving them time to seek cover inside the habitats. Lunar paraterraforming begins. Construction of a large transparent dome. It serves as a greenhouse. It receives the name the Lunar World House. Plants help recycle organic human waste and convert CO2 into breathable oxygen. Crops are genetically modified to be more resistant to radiation and better suited to grow in low gravity. Plants are also farmed to create the 3D printing glue used for construction, fueling the growing industrial age on the moon. The lunar bases begin to grow faster and faster. It takes 15 days for a cargo ship to sail from the United States to Europe. It only takes three days to reach the moon. Two bases are now established at the south pole of the moon, the ILRVS and the Artemis base. Over 20 countries now have a presence on the moon, from India and Mexico to Australia and Germany. Two space stations orbit above. These lunar space stations are transfer hubs. Rather than using large spacecraft, which need heat shields and air brakes to return back to Earth, small shuttle spacecraft are used instead to transport crew and cargo down to the surface of the moon. The Crewed Robotic Science Base, the International Lunar Research Station, is a town-sized settlement. Rovers patrol and prospect the lunar surface. The ILRS has established lunar-based astronomy and Earth observation capabilities, and biomedical experiments have begun. At the Artemis base, teams of scientists and explorers occupy the facility. 
Robotic rovers pour layers of hardened lunar soil onto inflatable dome shells. They get the nickname, the Hoppet Houses. The hardened soil protects the structures from micrometeorites and radiation. Work is underway to build the crater telescope, and a temporary shelter has been established within a lava tube. These underground tubes were formed when volcanic lava left large passageways underground, suitable for the construction of protected shelters with stable temperatures. The two main bases are located at the South Pole nearby the Shackleton Crater. The moon rotates once on its axis every 27, three days, and a day on the moon is 29.5 days on Earth. Away from the poles, areas experience a very long night, making solar energy production a challenge. The sun is always on the horizon at the poles. Here, there are permanent shadows in the craters. The low temperatures in the shadows allow for icy water to survive. And at the poles, it is possible to maintain constant communications with Earth. Fuel production facilities on the moon are now being used to refuel spacecraft on their way to Mars from Earth. There are even training facilities on the moon for Martian astronauts. The Neil Armstrong Terra Solar Farm goes online, marking a milestone in the industrial age of the moon. An insect was found in the hydroponic greenhouse. Nobody knows where it came from, but it looks like life always finds a way. University students begin deployments to the moon for funded research missions. Swarm robotics are now present on the moon. Micro rovers, eight by four centimeters, three by one, five inches in size, have solar panels on board. The tiny robots navigate to each other and connect to form one large solar panel. They are used for setting up temporary mining outposts. SpaceX extends the first boring tunnel digger to be used for converting lava tubes into permanent structures and habitats. The Lunar Mining Rush Lunar mining expands and territorial zones of national influences develop, securing resources. Aluminium and titanium are mined, along with rare earth metals such as neodymium and lanthanum. Companies rush to mine isotope helium-3, used in fueling fusion power reactors. It is not radioactive and does not produce any dangerous nuclear waste. Solar flares have bombarded the lunar surface with helium-3, so large quantities are found. Without regulation, a winner-takes-all mentality has developed. Tensions begin to rise. Testing begins for the first asteroid mining mission to redirect an asteroid into lunar orbit. The Lunar Crater Telescope goes online. It is one kilometer zero, six miles wide and located on the dark side of the moon. Using the moon as a shield, the telescope is free from Earth's electrical noise and free from radio noise generated by the sun. The crater telescope observes the cosmos, gathering data on the very early universe, a time before the first stars were born. A treaty is signed at the UN, limiting lunar mining activities on the dark side of the moon to protect the views of deep space. Travelers are staying in Earth view hotels. Brave explorers visit the dark side of the moon. Staring out into darkness, it is the most unsettling experience of being alone. The first lunar jobs board goes online on Earth, seeking barkeepers, hoteliers, a musician, and farmers. Training for moon-based living takes two months to complete. Trainees are awarded the certification of lunar deployment. A space creole is starting to develop. As humans live longer on the moon and the Earth cultures mix and change, this creates the first off-world space-based culture, accent, and language. Mirrors on top of light bending towers bounce sunlight into the dark craters of the moon, acting as many suns. Solar arrays capture this reflected sunlight to power small outposts. These dark craters have not received sunlight for millions of years. Rockets are now being entirely 3D printed on the moon at the Lunar Rocket Factory. Relativity Space are using materials harvested from the moon and from asteroids that have been redirected into lunar orbit. Humanity's lunar outpost has become a self-sustaining colony. Facilities are automated with robotics, needing little human intervention. Para-terraforming domes, nuclear fusion facilities, mining robots, 
and access to materials on asteroids all allow humans to move from the lunar industrial age to the now information age, focusing their efforts on tourism, astronomical studies, scientific exploration, and sending humans farther out into the solar system. Plans are underway to build the EDN, the Earth Defense Network, an autonomous detection and early warning system. Satellites placed in orbit around Earth and the Moon are equipped with phased array sensors and electromagnetic rail blasters, capable of long-range monitoring and able to disintegrate small to medium-sized objects. Objects that are either natural or intelligent. Orbiting asteroids and space station factories dot the lunar sky. The float lunar railroad expands across the Moon. Magnetic cargo robots levitate over a flexible, easy-to-deploy solar-powered track. The neodymium being mined on the moon, used to make supermagnets on Earth, now becomes more valuable on lunar. The lunar laser station is now operational. Solar sail spacecraft that uses the sunlight to push the sail are now laser-powered. Lasers target the sail, moving it forward through space. A mega laser sail spacecraft sets off from Earth using ground-based lasers on Earth and the Moon. Building begins on using asteroids inserted into orbit around the Moon as platforms to construct lunar space elevators, removing the need for chemical rocket launches. Multiple connected telescopes go online to form the Dark Side Deep Space Observatory Network. It monitors and watches deep space activity. The Earth Legacy Project has been completed. Deep lava tubes on the Moon shielded from solar radiation, meteorites, and human activity have been converted into a number of extinction-level vaults. Humanity's data and DNA are being sent for storage off-planet. These vaults are storing and protecting the biological data and the entire knowledge of Earth and humanity. The Lunar DN, a vault stores the cryogenically frozen genetic material of Earth's 9 million plus species of crops, seeds, plants, fungi, and animals. And it also stores human DNA. The data vault protects humanity's digital knowledge, AI programs, culture, and history. If anything were to happen on Earth, humanity will have the tools and the knowledge stored on the moon to rebuild. As our time-lapse journey comes to an end, reflect on the incredible milestones achieved during the first 10,000 days of the moon base. From its humble beginnings to a thriving lunar community, the human spirit of exploration knows no bounds. Thank you for joining us on this celestial voyage. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the wonders of the universe with fellow stargazers. Until next time, keep reaching for the stars.